Hey guys, Josh here from the Daily Mortgage Team. In today's video, we're going to discuss private mortgages, specifically the difference between mortgage investment corporations and true mom and pop private mortgages. In today's market, we're seeing a lot of investors get pushed into different types of financing, and you know we're, start, we're starting to see a shift for to more solutions-based financing. So we decided that it's really important for our entire audience to understand how these different options work, the cost of them, how you should use them, and possibly the exit strategy on getting out of them once your financing solution kind of go to the end of the term and you move into conventional financing. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that I'm seeing right now um, with some of my clients are the investors who picked up a lot of pre-construction condos, you know, especially if you got into them a year or two years ago and started making that deposit structure. Rates were not the same two years ago. You know, that huge increase in rates has pushed a lot of people out of the A side, trying to qualify into the B side. And, and even some guys who can't qualify on the B side now, you know, a lot of wholesalers out there as well too, who might've got caught um, holding on the properties that they just weren't able to assign to somebody else. So right now, I think, like I said, the majority of things that I'm seeing are these you know, emergency type situations where someone just needs to be able to close on a, uh, on a deal. Um, again, you know, just to be able to avoid any legal issues down the road, but there are some other benefits to using these lenders as well. Yeah, and I think there's a negative connotation in the market towards private money. So we wanted to, everybody to understand how this money actually works, who can offer it, um, and some of the solutions that are in the market. Now There's a negative connotation in the market towards private money. So we wanted to, everybody to understand how this money actually works, who can offer it, um, and some of the solutions that are in the market. Now, previous to two or three months ago when interest rates rose significantly, there were a ton of really great private solutions in the market. And as the market stabilizes and those solutions start to come back, it's going to be important that you understand how this works. So a mortgage investment corporation, also referred to as a MIC, uh, as if you've probably heard some investors talk about, are federally regulated financial institutions that lend out private money. Now, the majority of them either have large lines of credit that they leverage or they have investors that invest into them. And a lot of them are very niche in regards to their lending parameters. So um, some will have specific geographical areas, some will focus on residential, commercial, land development. And the advantage of using this type of financing is that they're true experts in what they do and what they offer. Um, you know, before interest rates started to rise and loan to value started to get peeled back, you know, having low carrying costs options that would, that actually had amortization in a private mortgage was something that you know, people who maybe didn't show their income um, as efficiently as maybe you would need to get a conventional loan but you can use these options in the market um, so you know we're starting to see a push into those mortgage investment corporation uh, financing solutions that we normally haven't seen you know, in the last few years yeah, so some of the advantages of you know private lending in general are that we're able to get away from these GDS, TDS um, ratios for the most part. Now, when we're taking a look at the mix side, these lenders want to make sure you are able to afford the deal. You know, they don't want to put you in a situation where you're swimming in debt. So if we're underwriting a deal and you know we submit in your TDS, which is your total debt servicing is sitting at 100%, that means all of your income is going into all of your debt. Now, they don't want you to be in a situation where you're underwater with your income and your finances and it doesn't make sense for you to move forward financially. So although there are situations or you know, these lenders don't necessarily take a look at the debts, they wanna make sure it makes sense for you. you know, they don't want to put you in a poor situation, like I said. Um, so keep that in mind. If you are in a situation where you know, we've gone over the risks with you and we've gone over the cost of borrowing and you know, it's outside of the realm of a MIC, that's where a hard money or a mom and pop type lender will be able to step in because they, you know, they don't have those same underwriting policies that the you know, financially regulated private lenders will have. So depending on what situation you're in, you, know, you might have to go between a MIC or um, a hard money lender. Um, again, stress testing where we see that on traditional type lenders where you're either, you know, or at this point, you're pretty much just 2% above your contract rate or qualifying as stress test, I guess. But, you know, on the private side, uh, you know, these lenders don't have that stress test. So if the rate is, you know, eight, nine, 10%, you aren't qualifying 2% above. Again, they're really taking more of an approach from an equity position or, um, uh, you know, a solutions-based type lending approach. So again, helping with that affordability um, issues that you might have on the residential lenders, allowing you to be able to qualify for those deals. Yeah, and I think it's important to understand that you know, 
again, as you said, these mortgage investment corporations, they don't necessarily qualify based off GDX, TDS ratios, but they do take it into consideration. Your personal debt load is something that you know, they are gonna look at when mitigating risk. So, you know, are you planning on staying in this mortgage for a prolonged period of time? Are you looking for a higher amortization period to reduce your ca cash flow out for a short period of time? You know, what is your exit strategy? And a lot of it has to do with the story that we can tell our underwriters. You know, this is why they're in the situation. This is how we plan on getting them out of the situation. We're going to transition you from private to B to A. So understanding the story is the most important part because they're specifically able to cater their financing solutions to your story to allow you to be able to transition out of it. Usually, the majority of the time, a mortgage investment corporation or private loan is not a long-term financial solution. It can be decently expensive, depending on the type of capital you do take on. There can be some fees involved to doing it. So, just understanding the type of uh, either mom and pop or mech capital you're into, um, and how you're going to be able to get out of it is, is super important. Uh, one of the advantages that we're seeing a lot of people transition into private capital right now is quick closes or, or less documents. So, specifically because as the market has shifted, you know, your financing might have shifted, or um, you know, you're not now able to qualify for the mortgage that you had had previously you know, when you're buying a pre-construction condo. So people are getting pushed into these situations where they need to close, but they need to uh, differentiate between which option is going to be best for them. So you know, those those equity lenders they're strictly based on that on equity. So if you have a pre-con and you bought it a few years ago, and the value of it is significantly more, you know, sometimes they can actually go up to the the new value, the 80, 75 percent of the new value instead of the actual purchase price. So, if you're having a cat, your cash strap right now, you're having a liquidity crunch. Being able to use that type of lender to reduce the amount of capital out is definitely an advantage. Now, are you going to hold it, or are you going to list it on the market in a time like this? It's really up to you as your exit strategy. But you know, those options and a, a availability to be able to close on time at higher on the value than you normally would have with a conventional lender is a huge added bonus. Yeah, and a few other niche products that they have as well too. Um, so obviously on the residential, but on the construction and the multifamily side as well. Um, for some of the construction projects, you know they'll do new build construction. Some of them even have something called like a purchase plus improvement, where it's a little bit different than that insured product. But basically, they'll allow you to go into a building, you know, gut, do your renovations, do your additions. Um, they will offer it in a construction type draw. Some of the advantages are they have unlimited draw structures. Um, they can be a little bit more competitive on their loan of value. So where some of the actual residential and bank type lenders will go loan to cost. Um, these mortgage investment companies will go um, loan to value. So 80% of your as completed value is gonna get you a lot more in your loan amount than what 75, 80% is gonna get you on your loan to cost. So you're gonna get a little bit more money. Um, again, not having to worry about the bank type financing where you're trying to uh, debt service that loan on the construction. And they're gonna be a little bit more lenient on your experience as well too and the amount of projects that you've completed in the past. Um, so you get a, just a little bit more flexibility um, um, with these types of lenders. On the multifamily side as well too, some of these guys have a really good multifamily repositioning product. We've talked about this a few times, but um, some of these lenders, you know, they will offer you decent loan to values on your acquisition. They'll also offer you, you know, loan to cost to help with your renovations. So not only are you gonna get the loan to close, but they'll also help you cover some of the renovation costs um, to get the project done at pretty competitive interest rates as well too. And a lot of these mix, if we're taking a look at the multifamily side, have the accessibility to go directly into CMHC financing, which is uh, pretty advantageous for those who are looking for CMHC financing. Um, again, you know, we've talked about this, but going from private to CMHC, um, you know, ideally you are working with a lender who is certified and is set up to go into CMHC. They can be a bit picky when coming out of private financing. So, um, you know, like Josh said, these mix, they offer a lot of very niche type financing solutions um, and they all have very different products and they all have very different uses. Um, and they have really great products. You know, really, you know, as much as they are private, and for those who aren't familiar with private, it can be a little bit scary. You know, the mortgage investment companies are a lot more of like a C lender than they really can be on the private side. Now there are some mix out there who you know are closer to the privates in terms of the rates and fees and stuff. But if you work with the right lender and you work with the right broker who knows you know which like to go to and which products that they offer, they're great guys to work with. You know, they really care about the clients and the projects that they're working with. You know, like I said, they want to make sure that you're going to be able to get in and out of the project. And these guys don't 
want to be holding on to the bag afterwards. They want to make sure you succeed um, and are able to you know, continue coming back for business and, and continue your growth in your portfolio. Yeah, and exit strategy is one of the most important things we focus on when we're bringing deals or construction deals or development deals or multifamily deals to our lenders because, as you said, they want to ensure the exit strategy. So whether your pro forma is outlining a, a generalized idea of where you're going to be at the end of your term or a more detailed idea, they're, they're going to dive deep into the numbers. A lot of these guys are ex-bankers. You know, they've done this for a long time and they have a duty and responsibility to their investors as well to ensure that they're not holding on to real estate for a long period of time. It's a short-term solution uh, to fill in the lack of certain aspects of your application, whether it's like, experience, capital, um, you know, there's a handful of different reasons why you would normally need to go to a, a private lender to a complete a project. So when you're looking at assessing uh, the viability of a project and you go to a bank and the bank says no, it isn't always the hard no. Um, and don't think that all private lending is predatory lending because it's not. A lot of lenders are in this type of lending space to add value to you as an investor. Um, as the climate changes, these lenders actually move faster than most banks do. So they're going to be able to create products and solutions in the market that don't necessarily exist. And you know, a lot of our private lenders work with us on and can hear our feedback as to what's happening in the market. Is there anything that they can do better to actually help you guys with your projects? Whether it's creating a more open, flexible term, whether it's adding fees onto the loan amounts, um, reducing capital out of your pocket on projects. You know, they truly have your interest at heart, um, as well as obviously making a return on their investment as well. Some general disadvantages, so you know, as there's advantages in the market, there are some disadvantages. So why would somebody use private lending in the first place? Here's some of the disadvantages of it. Higher interest rates. So specifically because they, they aren't AAA lenders or B lenders, but they do have higher interest rates that they are, than you would normally see in the regular conventional market. Um, this could range anywhere between you know, low carrying cost mortgages a few months ago and they were offering 5.99 or like 3.59 they were undercutting the b market at some points you know all the way up to you know 15 or 16 percent on the second mortgage so it really just varies depending on the type of project the type of lender you're looking to take on so the interest rates can be high um, they do offer so mortgage investment corporations do offer amortization uh, loans so you know, might just think that why would i use a private lender because it's an interest only loan i'm not paying off any of my principal that's not always the case um, there are some low carrying costs, lower carrying cost solutions in the market that you would have much higher extended amortizations that would normally be allowed with conventional A or B lenders. Um, some are seeing 40, 50 year amortizations. And if you actually take a look at you know, some of the commitments that were coming up a few months ago, you know, 599 and a 50 year AM, you can't even walk into a AAA bank right now. You get you get five and a half percent on a 25 year end. If you're comparing those rates right now, you're saving money if you walked in a few months ago. So some of these higher interest rates, um, are worth using or taking on uh, compared to maybe not getting the project done with an A lender. Yeah, and again, it just comes down to running the numbers in terms of cost of borrowing. Like, you know, if you're taking a look at a six and a half percent thirty-year AM, and you compare that to you know an eight percent interest only or nine percent interest only, you know, that interest only loan is going to be pretty comparable to where that um, amortized six and a half percent loan is going to be, with a little bit more of the flexibility of not having to worry about stress test and debt servicing, quicker turnaround times, and a little bit less documents. You know, especially for the business for self guys who don't have as verifiable income. You know, if we can't make it work on a BFS product with the B side, your, your next best option is going to be these these mix to be able to help you out. So lots of flexibility. Really, again, you know, it is private lending, so it does come down to the underwriting, making sure everything fits your financial situation and everything looks right, but you know, lots of great solutions to be able to help you guys out. Yeah, so one other disadvantage um, that is going to be a little bit different from the conventional lenders are fees. So a lender who usually a mortgage investment corporation or a regular private lender is going to have some sort of lender fee associated with their loan, whether it's 1%, whether it's 2%. Most mortgage investment corporations are around that 1.99 to 2.5% uh, range, depending on the loan to value and location. Um, sometimes this fee can be added into the loan amount or capped onto the top of the loan amount, so your net amount of funds to you does not change. It really depends on the location and how high loan to value the lender is willing to go to be able to do that. Um, same with broker fees. So when it comes to a regular private lender, um, it's not the same as conventional lending. So a regular bank, like a Scotia Bank, for example, or a First National, they compensate brokers for the business that they, that they bring them. 
Um, this is not the same for, for private lenders. So private lenders, you know, we are responsible for charging a fee to be able to get compensated for being able to structure that loan. So if you're looking at these types of solutions, just keep in mind that there may be some additional cost on top of what you would normally see with conventional lending. Make sure to ask that question first and truly understand the total APR or the annualized percentage rate for the cost of borrowing for that loan. Um, just because it could be a little bit higher than what you're normally used to. So one other option that you do have in terms of structuring the term is that they do provide some shorter term solutions. So if you only need project money for you know six months, um, you know they are able to offer terms for that. You know if you need money even less than that six months, you know you can take a look at open options as well too to be able to cut down the costs um, of borrowing, get you in for one or two months. Again, just you know understanding that with these open terms does come potentially higher interest rates, maybe higher fees. The lender knows they're going to be in and out a little bit quicker so they do want to make sure that they get that money back for their investors um, but yeah you know the flexibility is really the name of the game when we come down to private financing whether it's on the hard money side or whether it is on the mortgage investment side um, being able to tailor that solution to you know the needs of you and your loan and something to keep in mind is most mix uh, who put out paperwork or you know a commitment they're usually one year terms so if you are going to be getting this solution, it, most of the time it's for one year. And you know, if you are looking for this to be a longer term solution with a higher amortization, just understand that there is going to be some sort of renewal cost to that. So um, usually that renewal cost is you know, a quarter point, thousand dollars, twelve hundred bucks, depending on the lender. So if you are going to be taking a shorter term, just understand that after that year is done, you're going to have to renew your loan for another year. Some offer two year terms, but the majority of the time the uh, the private lending is much shorter terms than you would normally see with conventional lending. All right, guys, that wraps up Mortgage Investment Corporations and Private Lending. If you have any questions uh, from what you heard today, feel free to reach out to Aaron and myself uh, below. This can be a decently complicated and very unique solution, and this solution is tailored to each individual person's needs and wants. So um, if you think that this is, pertains to you, your project, or your current situation, again, reach out. We're happy to help. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It helps with the algorithm, allows us to be able to create more content for you. If you don't already follow us already, follow us on Instagram at the Family Team and the Canyon Real Estate channel. We'd love to hear what you guys think.